land not unlike your own, Angela Shelton dices and dines, learns and loves. The only thing she cannot seem to do is play by the rules. So here we find her, stirring up recipes for your body and mind. Today, Angela just says no to parasites. It's Halloween! Time for tricks and treats and freaks and parasites and other freeloaders. Today I'm going to make vegan chili and have a monster for dinner. A daily monster. Parent. Parenting is important, even parenting yourself. Many people were raised by wolves, like some of you, and your parents had no idea how to raise a healthy, happy child. So you have to learn to parent yourself. Just as you would take care of a child, make sure that you eat well, get enough rest, do your homework, and have some playtime. Creepy weirdos are all around us. So I'm gonna make chili just because of it's a great combo of the weirdest things that are gonna make you fart. I'm gonna make vegetarian chili, but I'm telling everybody that it's got meat in it when really it's vegan. I'm tricking them because I can and they'll never be able to tell the difference. It's so easy and I'm gonna cook it in a crock pot because crock pot cooking allows you to have your whole day free. I used all organic beans because we know from Johnny Appleseed that you need to eat organic to stay away from pesticides. I used two cans of organic black beans, organic pinto beans, kidney beans, and then I added one can of organic white kidney beans to add a little color. With your beans are one can of peeled tomatoes, easy, a little bit of tomato paste, onions, garlic, peppers, I used two, and then meat substitute. You can get it at any health food store, and sometimes your local grocery store will have it too. Cooking is all about timing. So as I'm chopping up my garlic and my onion, I'm gonna turn my skillet up to medium high. I'm gonna chop up my garlic. I like to squish it first. Chop it up and then put it in there with some olive oil. Parasites are both inside your body and outside your body. They can also be freeloaders. Have you ever had a freeloader? You know, the starving actor guy who sits on your sofa and drinks beer and eats pizza? You gotta get rid of those, but you have to notice that you have them in the first place before you get rid of them. Okay, my skillet is hot. I'm gonna drizzle a little oil on my hot skillet. And then I'm dumping my onion. Pepper. I just chop off the end and pull out the guts. Kind of like getting rid of a freak. Especially as a woman, you might feel bad cutting away freaks and weirdos because we as women tend to be caretakers and play everybody's mother and that simply is not necessary. You have to get rid of them sometimes. To get them into a dialogue and explain to them why they're a freak is really not necessary and quite dangerous because they love drama. It's best to wean them away from you. And you might say, how do you wean somebody away? You want to return maybe one phone call every three times they call. We're going to talk about the creatures in our colon. Are there really creatures in our colon, for real? If your colon isn't releasing the meats and fish, what happens when you take a plate of food and you put it in the sun and you leave it there for a week? It grows little creatures. You see furry friends, don't you? Oh my God. They wouldn't probably grow fur down there because there's too much moisture, so they're more slippery. <laughs> this three-day colon cleanse is completely wheatgrass and nutrition. Your body's never been fed more in its life. And on the third day, it acts like a plaster in your colon, a, a, a nutrition wheatgrass plaster. So it's really good for you. And then as it sh dries, it shrinks and pulls everything off your walls, including friends. Maybe. And this comes in chocolate, strawberry, <laughs> what, what kind? Cereal. Ch chocolate, strawberry, and cereal. What's the high colonic? Is that in conjunction with this or is it separate? Like um, what is the colon therapy that you do? Well, the colon therapy is something that you do when you um, are not even if you're having problems with bowel movements, it's nice to just clean out your colon um, with purified warm water and oxygen. So that's their kryptonite? Yeah. Is oxygen. That's right. Cool. So you would give my butthole a big breath of oxygen? Is that what you're telling purified me? Purified oxygen. It kills parasites. It breaks up fecal matter. Yeah. What have you seen that has grossed you out? Come on, tell us. This tube right here is coming out and it goes up into a machine. And so pretend this is like a, like a glass, a, like an um, aquarium. I've actually seen like little baby jellyfish with like a little blood and then like a long string come like that shooting through. 
Now, this puts a whole nother spin on turtle heads. Because it could actually be like, well, I want a cheeseburger. I'm going to try this, and then I think maybe I'm going to let you put this up my butt. I think you should. <laughs> Would you like to bring the camera there and do a video of your colonics? Well, you're covered all the time. It's not like a little porn video. Um, but we can actually show the procedure and <gasps> everything, and you're totally covered. You would be helping all the scaredy cats all over Los Angeles and the world that colonics aren't that bad. And the do's and don'ts of colonics. All of these products here that you see in front of us are at gotweetgrass.com. Do you know what they do with tapeworms in other countries? They starve the body for three to five days. Then they take a piece of meat and they put it right outside the mouth and they have scissors right there. Somebody has scissors and when the head comes out, they cut it off. Of your mouth mouth? Yes, it comes, it starts, it starts smelling the food. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not, I'm... And, I, and that is the honest to God truth. Become a vegan and stay at home. That's gotwheatgrass.com. Got wheatgrass? Okay, now for your meat substitute. I mean, you could use ground beef if you wanted to, although ground beef feeds the parasites in your colon, and we're talking about getting rid of parasites today. Meat substitute is usually cooked already, and you could eat it right away, but I like to brown it with my onions and garlic, so I'm gonna throw it in the frying pan with my onions and garlic, heat it up and brown it just a little bit, and then put it in my crock pot with all my beans. That doesn't cook for very long, maybe five minutes. I just drop it whole in the frying pan and mush it all around, break it up in pieces like ground beef, let the onion and garlic and meat, or fake meat, cook up brown just a little bit. Look, I'm just dumping my meat. Now I used vegan meat. You can also use ground beef or ground turkey or ground chicken, but make sure that you really cook it first in your frying pan with your onions and garlic before you put it in the crock pot. You just dump your beans in here. Dump them in, fun! Mmm! Tomatoes. Mmm. Make other people do the dishes if you cook and charge them money. I'm just stirring up all my ingredients and mashing the tomatoes because the tomatoes were whole peeled tomatoes. I'm gonna take a heaping tablespoon of tomato paste, blop it in there. Salt and pepper. I just dash it, like a handful. You can dash salt and pepper, just like you can dash away your parasites on MySpace and Facebook. Just delete them all. This is a fourth of a teaspoon of hot, red hot chili peppers. You wanna start with not so hot, because you can make it hotter later. Mm. Stirring up trouble. I like things a little hot. I'm gonna go dash, dash, dash. Three dashes of cayenne pepper. Put the lid on this and cook it for about five hours. So while this is cooking, ponder your parasites. Do you have any parasites in your life? Do you have any gurgly strange noises in your colon? Stew on that for the next five hours. In the spirit of parasites and weirdos and freaks, we've brought the daily monster, Stefan Buhel. Check it out, he was on LA Weekly, the cover. True. So I love your work and I'm gonna feed you some mush. This Fantastic. is chili. We were talking about parasites and weirdos and freaks and like those pesty, mm -hmm. annoying people and actual parasites mm -hmm. yes. you have in your life. Have you ever had it's any? It's true, of course, I make monsters. Of course the inspiration comes from somewhere. Maybe it's the parasites in your colon that are making you draw them. It's like this little fella is in my, is in my colon. Give me a cheeseburger. The telltale noise would be if you hear, in addition to the voice, also the clickety-clack of tiny little high heels. <laughs> what? You may notice on that one that he's wearing Christian Labaton shoes. Do you think you could interpret the parasites that are living within me and make can them come I, to life? Can I speak to Angela? <laughs> Angela's not here, man! <laughs> You'd have to draw it. You'd have to draw my parasite, what you think. We could probably arrange that. We're, talk we're, we're gonna draw the foreman. The union boss of the of your parasites. I'm assuming that they're unionized. Yeah, I would say that they're unionized. Parasites Local 827. Do you know what you're gonna draw? Or when you do that little psh, psh thing? I actually don't. I really don't. Um, it just it's comes completely to you. out of the moment. As soon as I actually try 
to sort of impose my will on it completely doesn't work. So you can't impose your will. It feels like they're actively resisting me at that point. Thanks for coming over. Thank you for having me.